Thanksgiving in the Woods by Phyllis Alsdurf, illustrations by Jenny Lovely. Thanksgiving in the Woods. When fall blows cold and jack-o'-lanterns lose their smiles, when branches lie bare and cornstalks rustle in the wind, that's when it's time for Thanksgiving in the Woods. Days and days go by. I keep adding to my Thanksgiving pile. A tool belt and my favorite rocks, a rope, seashells, a flashlight, and brownie. Everything I'll need for Thanksgiving in the woods. One chilly morning, Mama wakes me early. Today's the day, she says. I stuff all of my treasures into a backpack. Mama gathers boots and winter coats. Daddy grabs his guitar and my recorder. Come on, he says. Let's get going to Thanksgiving in the woods. We drive and drive and finally turn onto a curvy gravel road. That's when I see Grandpa standing next to his orange truck. He starts the engine and I climb into the cab. Time to get ready for Thanksgiving in the woods. We drive over rutted fields, then down a slope to a clearing under trees that reach to the clouds. I see cousins building a fort right next to the little stream, a perfect place of our own. Thanksgiving in the woods. Daddy and Grandpa unload long wooden planks for tables and bales of straw for us to sit on. Uncle Charlie makes a bonfire while neighbors hoist a tarp over branches. Everyone's rushing to get ready for Thanksgiving in the woods. Early the next morning, I'm one of the first ones to wake up. I can hardly wait for breakfast to be done. While grown-ups laugh and talk, kids pull on sweaters and boots. We want to get there first for Thanksgiving in the woods. Some neighbors are already at the site. Here, help stack up some kindling, Grandpa says. And we do, running whenever someone calls. We all need to help if we're going to have Thanksgiving in the woods. Soon a tractor comes over the hill. Grandma and Mama sit on the hay wagon, standing a load of pots and covered pans. Filled with turkey and dressing, mashed potatoes, peas, and corn. Oh, now it's starting to smell like Thanksgiving in the woods. Neighbors, relatives, and lots of people I don't even know cross the field to the hollow under the hemlocks. They carry baskets and bags and boxes filled with apples and pickles and pies, every imaginable food to share for Thanksgiving in the woods. At one o'clock, Grandma rings her special bell. We form a huge circle and sing. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free. People talk for a long time about being thankful. Brownie gets very hungry waiting until it's time to start Thanksgiving in the woods. Lines of people snake around the tables, filling plates with mounds of food. The cousins and I dart in and out, grabbing buns, turkey, and other treats we take to our fort. There we'll have our own Thanksgiving in the woods. Grown-ups are playing fiddles, banjos, and drums, and singing songs that everyone knows. Soon, Daddy joins in on his guitar. 
And I make up a tune of my own on my recorder. My way of celebrating Thanksgiving in the woods. We stand around the bonfire, warming up on both sides. Grandma passes out marshmallows, and I take two to roast toasty and brown. One of my favorite parts about Thanksgiving in the woods. When everyone's had enough turkey and potatoes and pumpkin pie, people start packing up their gear. In groups of two or three, they walk back to the farmyard, bringing an end to Thanksgiving in the woods. Daddy puts me on his shoulders and we walk with Mama and Grandma along a candlelit path through the woods. I pull Brownie close to keep him warm, happy that he came along for Thanksgiving in the woods. Back at the bonfire, I can hear a banjo and someone singing. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. Now, that's a perfect ending, says Grandma as we walk in the dark. A perfect ending to Thanksgiving in the woods. The end. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more stories, please subscribe to the Storytime channel. Have a great day.